If you've got your Bible, let's go to Nehemiah. Let's go to the book of Nehemiah. Okay, Nehemiah, and we're going to go to chapter 6 of the book of Nehemiah. Okay, chapter 6. And you know, guys, I wouldn't want you to leave here without dropping something into your spirit, you know, because these are exciting times that we are living in. Praise the Lord, and we give God praise. praise. Amen. Okay, chapter 6, we're going to read from verse 1, Nehemiah. Okay. It says, Now it came to pass, when Sambalat and Tobiah and Gershom the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall, and that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sambalat and Gershom sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some, uh, in some one of the villages in the plain of Unu. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sambalat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest a wall, that thou mayest be uh, their king, according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee in Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent him saying, There are no such thing done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. For they, they all made us afraid, saying, Their hand shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Praise God. Now it is easy to criticize and to scrutinize and also to talk about or to complain and gripe about the problems in the world or what we as men are doing or not doing or ought to be doing but what we really need today are men who will not only discuss a situation but will also acknowledge take responsibility and do something about it that's the kind of men that we need in the church today. Nehemiah saw a problem and he was concerned about that problem. And instead of wallowing in self-pity and grief, he took action. And this is what God wants us to do as men. That wherever there is a, there is a problem or a situation, God wants us to see the situation, take responsibility and put something into action. So when I saw a need for men's ministry, I put it into action. I didn't waste any time doing it. I put it into action. The first thing I did, I got a petition together, I wanted to see what other guys were interested in it. So I put it into action. And there were people that were interested in it, which enabled the ministry to grow the way that it has. You understand the concept? God wants us to be men of action. Not just talk about the word, not just say the word, but we need to be applying it in every situation. So Nehemiah saw a need. And instead of taking pity and going all over the place and thinking, what did he do? He took action. Praise the Lord. Look at what it said in Nehemiah 1 and verse 4. It said, and when he, this is when he heard about how the walls were not rebuilt in Jerusalem. He said, when I heard this, I sat down and I wept. In fact, for days I mourned and fasted and I prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commandments, listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people Israel. He took action. I confess that we have sinned. He stood in the gap. 
He said, I know we sinned. And he stood in the gap and he took action. We sinned terribly by not obeying the commands and the degrees, decrees and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. This is important. Nehemiah at that point then understood that God wanted him to motivate the Jews to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So he left a responsible position. He left a responsible position to do what God wanted. But the first thing that Nehemiah did when he saw a problem, what did he do? He mourned, he fasted, he prayed. He prayed to who? The God of heaven. And then he said, remember what you said to Moses, that if we don't obey, this will happen. But if we do obey, we know that this is going to happen. But he prayed. So his first port of call was who? God. His first port of call was God. As men, our first port of call should always be God. Nehemiah went to God first. He didn't think, oh, let me think of an idea. Let me see if I can. No, no, no. He went to God. And that's when he knew what he, what, what he needed to do. And he went to the Jews and he, said he had to motivate the Jews to rebuild the walls. So armed with instructions from God and also having received royal letters from King um, Artexius, because King Artexius actually favoured him by giving him letters so that he could have what he needed to do what he needed to do. So that was favour. God gave him favour with the king. He gave him favour. He wasn't afraid, he gave him favour. Praise God. So from the moment that Nehemiah arrived in Jerusalem, everyone knew he was in charge. Let me tell you, when you arrive somewhere, people need to know you're in charge. You know, the devil needs to know you're in charge. Satan himself needs to know that you are in charge. Wherever you walk, you want to see the glory of God in your life. And that's what God wants us to do as men. He's already given us the capacity and the power to do that. So I want to encourage you, take action. Where action is needed, take it. But first and foremost, go to God. Say, Lord, what do I do about this? How do I deal with this? And God spoke to Nehemiah. Nehemiah knew exactly what he needed to do. So from the moment he arrived in Jerusalem, everyone knew who he was. Everyone knew he was in charge. Praise God. He organized, he managed, he supervised, he encouraged, he met opposition, he confronted injustice, and he kept going until the walls were built. And God wants us to stand firm. God wants us to keep going. He does not want the work in us to cease. So what we have learned, we need to make sure that we are putting stuff into operation in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. We've got to take action. When the enemy is coming at us, we've got to take action. Don't you know who I am? Hmm? Come on. Don't you know who I am? I've already spoken to God. God's already told me what I need to do. Don't you know who I am? You take action. You stand on the word of God. And even though Nehemiah meets opposition, he employs a strategy to frustrate the enemy. What does he do? He prays, he encourages, and he puts the people on guard duty. Stand. Stand firm. They didn't have to go and look for the enemy. When the enemy came, they were already ready for him. Glory to God. Come on. They didn't have to do anything else. They didn't have to uh, 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 go out and hunt and, and look for Satan. No. Stand firm. Isn't that what it tells us in Ephesians? Ephesians 6 tells us to stand firm. And having done all, stand. That's what it encourages us to do. So we give God praise for his work. So the question is, what are the things that you value the most? Nehemiah valued the things of God. He valued the gifts that God had poured into him. And we need to remember the gifts that God has given to us. And we need to be good stewards of those things that God has given to us.
And two key things that God has given to us is one, salvation in Jesus Christ. And we need to value our salvation because Christ died for me. We wouldn't even be meeting in this fashion had it not been for Jesus. So we must value Christ. We must value having him in our lives. And whenever we need to take action, we call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we walk in the name of Jesus. That's what God gives us. Secondly, we must be thankful for the gift of time, which we often take for granted. Come on, think about it. We take time for granted. Once time has gone, you can't get it back. It's gone. And people are always trying to get time back. You cannot get time back. Therefore, we need to start using time wisely. We can certainly affect our future by choosing to value time and use it in the right way. Time is important. Once it's gone, it's finished. There are three scriptures, four scripture verses I want us to consider. First, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. All has been heard, the Bible says. This is from the Amplified Version. The end of the matter is this. Fear God, revere and worship him, knowing that he is, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole of man, the full original purpose of his creation. The object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of all happiness, the adjustment to all inharmonious circumstances and conditions under the sun, and the whole duty for every man. That's how the Amplified Bible puts it. In simple terms, you're not a man unless you're with God. That's the bottom line. The world's perception of man is not right. The world's perception of man does not line up with God's work. You're only a man in relation to God. And when you know who you are in him, you will take action. Where you see injustice, you will seek for justice. Where you see, see uh, sickness, you will pray for healing. You understand what I'm saying? You take command because that is the power that God has given to you and I. Nehemiah took charge. He managed, he, he encouraged, he prayed, he put people on guard duty. He knew exactly what he needed to do. Why? Because he sought the king of heaven first. And then he put it into operation. He didn't waste any time. He understood that whatever God has given him, he needed to use the time wisely. Glory to God. That's where God wants us to be. Luke 18 and verse 1. And also Jesus told them a parable to this effect, that they always, that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward or faint or lose heart and give up. What does it Jesus say? Jesus says men ought always to pray and not to faint. So therefore we must use our time wisely. Let's pray. Let's seek God. Let's grow in him. Let's grow up in him. Let's grab a hold of his word so his word shapes our life. This is what God wants us to do. You are only a man in relation to God. 